My name is Amy Sessions and I'm the editor and associate publisher of Emirates Month. In our series, In Discussion With, we'll be joined by the industry's leading experts, incredible women of influence, and the global luxury brands who inspire us. Today's guest is Rania Fowers. Welcome, Rania. Hi, Rania. How are you? Hi, Amy. I'm good. How are you? Very, very well. I think we both had a bit of time off since we just shot the cover for the Sunrise Gate. I already miss you. <laughs> I know, I know. We had such a, I think it was one of the hottest shoots I've done, to be honest. You soldiered through that amazingly well. It, it came out so well. We had such a great response to it. Did you also have a great response to your side? Honestly, like, I didn't even feel the heat. Like, the uh, people on cast were amazing. You were amazing. The vibe, the energy was amazing. Like, I, I didn't really feel the heat or anything, although it was hot, but it didn't really bother me. I was just so excited to shoot the cover. It was so funny because so many people asked me where we shot it. I don't think anybody, anybody believed that we actually shot it in Dubai because it looked yeah. so unusual and it looked very typical. So for those people that haven't seen the shoot yet in the print magazine or anywhere else, or if they haven't seen it on your Instagram or ours, um, it was Harb Island. So the whole idea was like this kind of like Jamaican castaway tropical vibe. Um, and I think it really suited you, but you were telling me on the uh, day that it was quite an unusual, styling for you you mostly had different experiences when you're shooting for magazines before yes i think this is probably the most unusual thing i've done so far <laughs> and it has to be my favorite thing honestly like thanks to oh, emerson exactly. for pushing me from my comfort zone and i feel like i discovered a new side of me i discovered that i can be that island harbor girl like <laughs> i i really loved it it looked really good on you and we had some really great pieces. Obviously it was sponsored by Farfetch and it was amazing because it was so interesting for me styling it with so many unusual brands that, okay, maybe they would not sit together in a store, but actually amazing paired together on the shoot. I think one of my favorite pictures of you was one that we did at the end of the day. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen all of the shoot, we shot the, uh, the entire thing over about eight hours or so, um, because it was so hot in the day. So we did a lot in the morning, a lot in the afternoon. And as the sun was going down, we went and shot on the boat and you were just sitting on the edge of the boat. Yeah. I was out on the water with our photographer and uh, just watching you like sitting and posing on the edge of the boat. It was so amazing. Do you have a favorite image from that shoot of you? Honestly, I think the cover is my favorite photo. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I like the one that's your Instagram profile as well. Yeah, that shot. No, no, the cover of the the magazine, like that shot yeah. of me holding the surfer board and just running. Yeah. It really did. It really did feel so different for me. You know, it was like a whole new experience and a whole new side of me that I didn't know I had. We put you in the outfit, and I knew you were enjoying it because I think you were you picked up the board and suddenly you were running down the beach with it yeah. and i thought how amazing <laughs> yeah it was very unplanned we just saw the board and i'm like okay let's do this it looks super cool i'm really grateful for you rolling with it because it was something different and i think um, i'm quite proud obviously i've been out here several years now and was here before and i think it was really really an amazing thing everybody has reacted to it and said for it to be a a different cover, for example, you wouldn't necessarily think immediately of this kind of styling as the, you know, women of the Emirates. And I think yeah. it's been popular that, you know, you can really see that they are so modern, contemporary, really interested in these things. I had so many girlfriends of mine here who were local, who wear a buyer, but would absolutely wear these pieces and buy them on holiday. So it was, it was really cool. I wanted to ask you because we were talking about it. And um, obviously, I mean, I think it's been, a quite challenging year this year. You were saying to me that there are kind of some morning practices that you've been doing and some different things that you've been doing at home while it's been the pandemic. Um, what do you what do you feel like you've learned in this time about yourself? Do you feel like it's been a positive time as well? You can take it both ways. You can look at it negatively and positively. And I think just for me, what worked is I just locked out everything and I just focused on myself during this time i i kind of disconnected from social media for a while mm -hmm. uh i was i learned that i could be more patient uh i discovered so many sides of me that i didn't know i had 
uh, I became so much more organized. I started cleaning my pantry. Uh, <laughs> I, I developed a fitness routine. Um, just everything is more organized, you know, cause mm -hmm. like having, doing what I do and being always on the run from shoots to traveling to, you don't really get to sit with yourself and know what's going on. How do I feel? What does Rania? Mm -hmm. So sitting with myself, and battling my demons in the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just, it was like, just learning more about myself. And I think a lot of people did learn a, a lot about themselves from what I see, like just sitting with yourself for a while and seeing what you did, how, like I basically sat down and I looked at the photos that I've done, looked at the content that I created. And I felt like sometimes I didn't give it my all because of, how busy I was, how, yeah. how I was always on the run, not thinking right. And when I sat down and I just cleaned out my closet, I just changed my image. I uh, started meditating. I, I started doing like, I'm like now doing a self healing journey. So I did a lot of things in this lockdown to keep mm -hmm. myself, you know, busy. And I think it really has worked out for me. Do you, when you say you do meditating, because obviously we've done a few um, interviews like this um, with um, some very interesting um, other people and lots of people touch on this. Do you do it in the mornings or do you do it as a kind of practice at the end of the day? I'm quite interested in myself, but I, I haven't managed to find a rhythm where I do it consistently. Yet. Yeah, I don't really have a stable time because mm -hmm. of how my schedule is, but I just do it when I feel like doing it. It's Minimum effort, you know, like I, sometimes I always look at things and I'm like, oh my God, this is so hard to commit to. But then I look at myself and I'm like, Rania, you're a minimum effort. Like don't make, <laughs> don't let it take, you know? And this is how I feel like I, I like develop a habit when I don't really <laughs> think a lot about it. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> It may, you know, it makes sense to me. I think it can't be a, it can't be a major effort. It has to be something that fits in. So some people might have thirty minutes. Some people might have five. Like, imagine having to stress about meditating. You just lose the whole point of meditating. You know. Yeah, so exactly. So giving my minimum effort whenever I want to, whenever I feel like I'm down, whenever I have five minutes to myself, um, I meditate, and it could be in different ways. You know, because for us. Praying is also meditating. So it's a lot of different things. Interesting. I wanted to ask you um, in, in kind of having this perspective of in a way doing less in this time, but doing things better, maybe better, uh, yeah. something that everybody wants to do. How have you looked at the brand? Because for me, it's really amazing the brand that you built. Like I, I wasn't sure we hadn't met each other before we did the shoot and I found you just so hard working and easy to get on with. Is that kind of how you've grown your brand? Is, is being careful about what you say yes to and working really hard. What do you think is the, the reason behind the success of it so far? So I did, definitely did cut a lot of things to get to where I am today. And mm -hmm. because I'm focusing on, I wouldn't say being luxury, but focusing on mm -hmm. just presenting the things that I really, really love and admire and use on my, like use my everyday life. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like I had to cut back a lot of things. I don't know if that made sense. Wait, let me think about what I said right now. Cause I can't <laughs> say it right. Can you ask me the question again? Yeah, I'm going to wake my bulldog up first. Hang on. Bruno, stop snoring. <laughs> and you also have a bulldog room. Room. <laughs> Shush, buddy. Okay. Um, I was asking. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Rania, I was asking you on set about how you grew your brand, and I'm just wondering if, if we're kind of talking about and focusing on doing less but doing things better. That's Do you it, feel true. like that's the approach that's most successful for your brand? Because to me, I, I take my hat off to you. I think what you managed to build already is really incredible. So it's interesting for me, your, was there a strategic approach or just does it all come from gut feeling or do you notice that uh, you're being more selective about what you say yes to as it grows? Because you must have so many opportunities. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, uh, I am being super selective, especially recently, 
because I'm developing the habit of less is more, you know, like I just want to do things that I'm fully 100% sure about things that I know bring good, you know, like starting off in the beginning, I was young, so I didn't really know what was happening, what was I doing, what was I saying, and then just growing into like into my platform and growing my platform, um, I learned so much. And this is why I'm being so selective right now, doing less is more for sure. And I think everyone, I think everyone's gonna be more selective. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about a book actually, because before I met you, and obviously you look amazing and everything, but you're never sure before you meet someone what they're into in their personal life. And I was really interested to know that you're kind of an avid reader and that you're reading really intelligent books as well, like about kind of personal growth. And, and me too, I love this kind of thing. But um, you mentioned a book in the interview that we did in the print magazine um, called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. And it's really strange because in one of the other webinars that we did, I mentioned this book and I said, um, actually it was to um, Maria, the founder of Rodeal. I was saying I tried to read this book and years and years ago and I just didn't understand it. And there's a second one called A New Earth. And years later, when I was actually just back in Dubai, I read this book and it says in this second book, if you tried to read the first book and you can't understand it, you weren't ready for it. So I then went back and read the first book. Yeah. And so I would love to know what you think about this book and how did you come about this book? Um, I think like three or four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, my mom just like changed her lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, she became so much more spiritual. Uh, she started listening to Louise Hay, Eckhart Tolle, um, all these um, speakers and she somehow got me into it. However, mm -hmm. I was not ready when she did. So every time I would go, I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm not getting this, you know, like I would make stupid excuses. And I think mm -hmm. what you mean by you were not ready now. Uh, in my, like, in my defense, I just said, oh, like, I don't understand, like, their accent, you know, like, I've been, tr I was trying to make excuses for myself because just like you explained it, I was not ready. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I would say last year, um, or a year and a half ago, I, I went to like, somehow I found myself reading this book without someone telling me, oh, you have to read this book. Or mm -hmm. I just found myself in a library. I'm like, oh, this is the book that everyone talks about. You know, like, let me give this a, another try. I didn't read it. I did have listened to Eckhart Tolle's po podcasts in the beginning. And mm -hmm. this is what I didn't really, uh, like Eckhart Tolle, Joe Dispenza, Louise Hay, I listened to their podcasts. And it didn't really, I wouldn't say trigger me, but I didn't really feel it. And when I did buy this book and I read it and I was like, wow, I need to read this book every year to remind myself. Like, and it just became a habit where I read this book every year. So I, I don't lose focus. I know I just reset my memory. And this is what I've been doing for like now a year and a half. I've read it twice almost. That's really interesting because I actually thought to myself, I need to pick this back up and read it again. So after this webinar, after your recommendation, I shall also start doing this. It's a, a really good book. It just resets you, you know, you're just like back to the first point. You're like, okay, like, you know, a whole reset. I agree. Um, it's interesting because I was watching your Instagram the other day and you and your mum were on your Instagram. And I can see where you get your energy and your vibe from. Um, you and your mom are super close, yeah? Yeah, my mom and I are best friends. I see her every day. That's so nice. And you studied fashion, and she is a fashion designer, correct me if I'm wrong. She makes amazing pieces as well. She made yeah. an incredible dress for you, which I'm dying for. Um, do you think this is, this is kind of like inherited? Do you think it's in the blood, this kind of to style and to... I know you want to, you were talking to me uh, about on the shoot going into maybe something to do with fashion later on. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I don't know if I do believe in inheriting uh, a trait, but I definitely believe that it's a pattern that 
I took from my mom and from my grandma and from my grandfather because my grandfather is an art collector. My grandmother mm -hmm. is, I wouldn't say she's a fashion designer, but she, her business is in fashion. And I think it's a passion that we all took from each other. And somehow like, I hope to pass it to my kids. And for sure, I think being a, an influencer and I think being on social media and having my own platform is practice for me to do something bigger. And this is how I see it. Do you get um, brands approaching you a lot on your platform? And if so, like how do you decide which ones to work with, like fashion brands? Yeah, like fashion brands. So in the beginning, mm -hmm. I didn't. And now, uh, day by day, I've been getting brands that I've been dreaming to work with. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> we just, to deserve this, you know? It's just the greatest feeling ever to, you know, to like manifest something. And then you see yourself getting it and you're like, wow, like, I can't believe I reached to this point. You know, you really do appreciate it. It's interesting in our industry. Um, as I said to you before we approached you, we wanted to have you on the cover and um, you're never sure how people are going to be in real life. You can't always tell if you've not met them before. And yeah. one of the reasons that I was so, um, you know, I called your interview Real Rania in the print magazine. I really meant that. Like, I think we I bonded know. very yeah. well. Amy, thank you so much. <laughs> Everyone read the message and they're like, oh my God, Rania, like, <laughs> you are so good at the shoot then. <laughs> Um, no, it's a pleasure. I mean, I, I really mean it. We clicked very well on, on set, but also I think that you are so down to earth, someone that's achieved the level of success already that you've done. And I think it's, it's really commendable because there are other people in the industry that don't carry it in the same way. So I think you should be really proud of yourself for that. Um, and it's a pleasure okay. to work with you. Thank you so much. And it's you and your and the people on the cast that brought up this side of me honestly like you guys really did make me feel so comfortable um i felt like i can shoot for days it was so much fun like <laughs> we will um, hold you to that next time yeah. <laughs> Five day shoot. i'm down for it because it was really fun from the glam team to you to the photographer like everything was just so good and the vibe with like the energy in the shoot was really good so thank you yeah guys. We all had a good day. I wanted to ask you um, just a couple of last questions because obviously the issue is the summer escape. We yeah. haven't been able to escape too many uh, to too many destinations this summer. But where's on your your list if you can go away when all of this is cleared up a little bit? Do you and your husband want to go somewhere, or have you just is there anywhere left for you to explore like that's top of the list? Okay, so I think basically just sitting down and like like being in quarantine and like watching all these TV shows and all these movies, my husband and I decided that when things are better, we're definitely going to LA because I feel like just watching those movies and those TV shows and like a lot of things, you know, it's mostly in LA. So we were just like, we really need to go. I've been so many times, but my husband has never been and he's mm -hmm. really influenced by the culture. So he would love to, like, it's his dream to go. So. Yeah, I've never been actually, and I would like to go myself. I think it's a super interesting um, place to visit. I'm yeah. always, usually with my holidays, trying to, uh, I like new cultures, so I'm always swayed by that. So America's never top of my list, but the more I hear about LA, the more I think it would be a very good place to visit. Um, yeah. And just a last question, because I know we're gonna get so many, so many questions about this. Um, you were very easy with all the uh, beauty stuff on set. It was really quite a simple, natural makeup look. I generally prefer that in the room when we're shooting. But do you have any brands? Because I would love to have a call out to the people that you know love you and like and and trust us with advice. Like, what kind of beauty brands do you do you use, or do you have any particular products that you would say work really nicely for everybody? Um, I'll give you my like top five favorites. You want you Perfect. want to do that? Okay, so um, I really love lip liners from MAC Cosmetics mm -hmm. and Charlotte Tilbury's lip liners. Mm -hmm. uh, they have really good lip liners. And if you're a lip liner girl, it's really hard to find good lip liners. We love Charlotte Tilbury, actually. Mm -hmm. yes, Very much. Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I, I think less is more for sure, especially on the face. And uh, I believe to have really good skin a really good base and that's all you need um 
So I would say I really, 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 really love the fluid cheer from Charlotte Tilbury. Mm -hmm. It's like um, it's like a bottle with like this like very rosy pinkish sheer found. I, I want to say foundation, but tint, mm -hmm. and it's so gorgeous, especially for the summer. Feels so good on. Um, there are brands that are not really necessary in the region. Is that all right with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's fine. Uh, there's a um, one thing that I've been obsessed with this summer, and actually discovered it this summer, is uh, the Super Goop sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about it is it's literally almost not almost. It's literally invisible. So you just put it on, and it's 50 SPF. And usually I do suffer because I want to put the SPF, then I want to put makeup, and then I would end up looking grayish, and all of that. Uh, the super goop, uh, super goop SPF is amazing for every day. Feels like you have nothing on. Uh, one thing that I never leave my house with or without is the Anastasia uh, brow gel. Mm -hmm. It's something I, I even if I have to go shower, I would just put it on because it just feels so good on my brows. And it's, you feel groomed in, don't you? At least. Yeah in and like it doesn't really have a color so you can use it anytime it's like basically transparent and mm -hmm. sometimes I even use it on my lashes to give my lashes like a lift but without color so more of a like you know less is more uh what more uh I've been loving the Kevin Aquan foundation uh sorry uh concealer it's a bit thick but it really for me, I felt like it removes darkness from my under eyes. It really just eliminates the whole thing. That's perfect. We always get, I mean, we always get um, really great feedback from the shoots that we do because we do try to keep it quite natural looking. And I yeah. think in this day, I'm a big fan of trying to make the best of what you have and not changing everything. And I think uh, you looked amazing in the shoot, but we didn't actually use a huge amount. So obviously you're beautiful anyway. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> Honestly, the glam team was amazing and you, your idea of just being minimal is exactly what I, I hoped for, you know, like yeah. going on the shoot. I'm like, I hope like I hope it's not going to be like crazy, dramatic, you know, makeup. But obviously you get it. <laughs> well, we're very proud, honestly, to have you as one of our one of this year's cover stars. And we'll be doing some very exciting things with our cover stars later on in the, in the year. So we look forward to working with you again. And I'm looking forward to seeing you personally again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. You, honestly, you made this whole experience for me so, so memorable. Like, I definitely not forget this. This is, I said this on my Instagram. This has to be my favorite thing I've ever done so far. Oh, we had also such a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amy. Bye. Bye. Bye.